Welcome back to the Breadcrumbs Project and our investigation on to what's happening in in our space, in our uh, in our solar system, in our inner solar system. So uh, I've been looking at some of the trajectories of Comet Atlas Y4, and thank you, Paul, for correcting me and pointing out that on one of my previous recordings I had um, in fact tracked uh, Atlas Y1 and yeah it is it is confusing because uh, um, of the Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4 uh, we'll get into that in the next video but right now we have to focus in on the trajectory of, of Atlas Y4 and also on the trajectory of SWAN which is a very interesting um, comet that should have been found way earlier by all of our sensing devices but it was called to our attention just a couple of weeks ago then we have the interesting satellites uh, you can identify this and find it as 1998 OR2 this is one satellite that we're going to look at and it has an incredibly interesting trajectory and orbit uh, and is considered a near-earth object if we look at it right now, and some of the um, uh, astronomers who have taken some great uh, video clips of this, uh, an amateur, mind you, we're not getting anything from, uh, from the professional community, and we're certainly not getting anything from NASA or JPL on these, uh, on these uh, objects. But if you look at some of the video of uh, uh, 1998 OR2, this, um, this asteroid, then you're going to see a very interesting uh, way it is traveling through space. It very much looks like it has a heat shield in front of it, if you've ever seen how, um, how uh, uh, many objects have entered space, especially uh, the Apollo projects and how they had a heat shield and how it was reflected in some of the recordings that they were able to get on some zoom in video. Well. Um, comet 1998-OR2, a very interesting near-Earth uh, object, has a uh, Nero, a Neo, a Neo has a very interesting orbit. And then we have um, AT6, found in 2016, uh, and this asteroid has an incredibly interesting orbit. It is a near-Earth object. And it might be one of the objects that we are seeing giving off some amazing light displays uh, in space near Venus because it is manifesting itself near Venus from our view. And so it is coming incredibly close. And then as we watch these four objects, I am starting in February 1st. Of, uh, of this year 2020 today as you see over here it is February 25th my time zone um, and I'm in Spain is uh, 224 in the p.m. so let's roll this tape and each second is going to be uh, four days long so here we are in um, February we have asteroid AT6 and this should have been discovered way long ago because look at this orbit that it has so it's been passing us for millennia and we're just finding out about this and OR2 which has an incredibly interesting orbit has passed us by and then we're around June and look at these guys These asteroids run very close to us. And they're supposed to be two to three thousand, I mean two to three kilometers, uh, two to three thousand meters in uh, in size, but we just really don't know. So we're getting into August. And notice these satellites. And now we are starting to see where Swan has come over, but let's go back to May. Let's pause. Let's 
let's go back to May. So May, these two satellites are going to be in incredibly close proximity. Here we have Comet Atlas in going to be in very close proximity to the Earth as well and the Sun. And then here we have Swan. And these two guys are going to come incredibly close to each other. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. Let's get a little bit slower. And look how close everybody comes around May 20th. Ready? Roll tape. 15 May, 16 May. Here's the Earth and the satellites. And then 20 May, stop. And look at these two. And uh, my next video, which will be up later this evening, uh, my time, um, probably around nine or ten, because I have to, uh, I have to edit, and uh, then also um, once you edit, you have to compile the video, and that takes a long time, guys. Uh, compiling the video can be two to three hours long, four hours long. I don't have a massive uh, server farm to compile videos and then to upload it can be another 20 to 30 minutes in doing all of that work. So um, I'm going to go into more detail about Comet Atlas, Comet Swan and hopefully uh, Satellite 2019 AT6. Um, the mysteries surrounding this because this should be an incredible event that we should be celebrating an amateur like me shouldn't be talking about this. NASA should be just going outrageously crazy about this. But there are so many interesting things happening in the space community that just don't make sense. Usually they're always, if there's any kind of event that they can take advantage of, boy, they are using their PR agencies wall to wall, talking to networks, morning shows, and we're not hearing anything about these incredible events that are occurring. So look at that alignment. Let's go back a couple of days. And all of these guys are coming together. I still say that Atlas Y9 is Nibiru. Uh, Swan could possibly be another planet because they have the same kind of profiles. They're coming up greenish blue. And... Um, I think, I think uh, 2019 AT6, uh, to my Hopi uh, followers out there, I, I still have a great feeling that that is the white brother that is coming back. Um, it's, it just has a feeling because it's got such a brightness and, uh, and strong display, but it hasn't gone too far. It's always been close and around. So this is an interesting asteroid. Again, it may be nothing. This may just be such conjecture and overthinking from somebody that's locked in quarantine. Sure, and uh, you know, give it to my one of my commenters, uh, Paul, who you know just says this is nothing. It may be nothing, but it's just so weird that these are all objects that uh, have been been discovered in 2019 and 2020, which should have been discovered and noted a long time sooner. And then all of the, the, the silence from all of the um, astronomical community, we've just gotten such bizarre little leaked pictures from Hubble and from some of the greatest telescopes that we've, that we've had ever, just are not doing anything with these objects. And finally, Today is Saturday, and in true political fashion, and this just feels so political, we have a dump of 19 satellites that have just been discovered in April, and then um, today is Saturday, and these were just dumped a couple of days ago, Thursday evening, Friday morning, which just gets no attention from the press usually. So this is coordinated in some aspect um, because there's just no announcement, no press of 19 objects suddenly discovered. And look, we can scroll through. 
And we've just never had a time where just so many objects are suddenly dumped. They are all um, in close proximity in astronomical units to the planet Earth. And it just, it, this just all is just so circumspect and invites interest by somebody like me who is the breadcrumbs project. We just see different breadcrumbs out there and we pick up these breadcrumbs, collect them, and fun, funnily enough, interestingly enough, oddly enough, find a truth that is so interesting and spectacular. So we have a lot of interesting things happening in the skies. Uh, I'm going to be talking about that in my next video. And then um, I'm going to use many recordings of astronomers and observers to point out how interesting these objects are in space. And then finally, um, hopefully tie all of this in together into a whole loaf of a complete truth that I view. You can disagree, and whatever's going to happen is going to happen, but at least you'll have some ideas and indications, uh, and none of this will be a surprise. But surprises are happening and, and, and awaiting us. All right, so thank you for following the Breadcrumbs Project, and I will see you in another video probably in about six hours from now. Ooh, something divisible by three. Isn't that interesting?